Hi friends, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. This is your daily news fix. Uh, the U.S. government is actually going after Google. Uh, are they monopoly or not? That is the question. You get to this headline. Uh, U.S. says Google spends or pays, I should say, more than $10 billion a year to maintain search dominance. So we all know Google is the top dog, but are they staying in the top position doing things illegally? Uh, let's take a look at the statement here. Uh, U.S. prosecutors allege Google pays more than $10 billion annually for agreements that ensure it is a default search engine on mobile phones and computers as the most significant antitrust monopoly uh, trial in 25 years. And um, it is interesting because I was thinking about this where you buy a phone, you buy a computer, and then Google is just set at that, right? Because theoretically, you could do it to where you you know log into your computer for the first time or your phone and it says, hey... Which search engine do you want to use? Please select one out of 10, something like that. But for many, uh, Google is the default. Now, yes, it is um, everyone's favorite search engine, mine included. However, it wasn't always like that. There were many, many choices back when the internet boom first started. Uh, and when I was young, it was actually really fine, uh, fun, I should say, uh, to trust many different types of search engines like Excite, uh, Yahoo, Asgs, uh, I can buy any more. I can't think we run off the hand, but um, there was just a bunch of choices and Ultimately, Google did survive. Now, Google is going to make the case that uh, their practice or their business model is just better and people prefer it. But did they do anything illegally? Uh, here's uh, more. Uh, this case is about the future of the Internet and whether Google search engine will uh, ever face meaningful competition, right? Is there ever going to be competition for Google? Um, also, it says here, uh, Dieter said the tech group in uh, 2010 began to illegally maintain monopoly you had established it currently represented 89% of internet market uh, search engines or whatever. So um, it basically it dominates, right? 89% of the market hasn't been doing this stuff since 2010. That's what we're going to see. Um, I guess this trial might take a couple months. So don't expect it to be a quick one, but I do think it'll be really important in whether or not we uh, break up Google. There is a possibility we could break up Amazon in the future. That uh, may start next month. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, talking about breakups, it looks like they're firing yet more people over at Binance. This time it says, uh, Binance USCO departs as crypto platform cuts third of its staff. So um, th there's, you know, the, the U.S. Uh, version of it uh, was at Binance.us. And, um, you know, the CEO is jumping ship, essentially. It, it makes it tough to be really believe in this company at all. Um, I think CZ, right, which is a, uh, the CEO of the, the whole thing, I think he's hanging out in Dubai. Who knows where he is? I was, I was saying, I think that's where he is. But, um, you know, cutting a third of your staff uh, is not a, <laughs> um, but not positive news. Now, I don't know if the crypto bulls can spin this in any kind of positive way, but I, I'm not reading it as positive. Um, here's a quote here. Uh, the actions we are taking today provide Binance.us with more than seven years of financial runway and enable us to continue to serve our customers while we operate a crypto-only exchange uh, the SEC's aggressive attempts to cripple our industry and the resulting impacts on our business have real-world consequences for American jobs and innovation, and this is an unfortunate example of that. So they're making the claim that, uh, you know, it's the government's fault, and they're just trying to do a good job to give America jobs and innovate those same kind of things. Um, my take on this stuff, I just stay away from crypto. I'm not into it. I totally get it, though. If you want to have a popular channel on YouTube, just talk about crypto. And they complain about the government all the time. And then when you lose all your money, complain that the government didn't help you. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, help, um, the UAW, so that's the United uh, Auto Workers, they might go on strike. There's still no deal yet. We've been tracking this one. Um, so they've got until 11.59 p.m. Thursday. So that's just a couple days. And in fact, I wanted to read a quote from someone in the community. Guys, I, I do read all the comments, so I do always appreciate it. But this is something that's fun to share because we have a lot of smart people in the community. Love to hear your thoughts. So this is coming from Michael. Michael says, generally, I support unions, okay? Um, I am in a union for engineers, especially trade unions. Um, the UAW, I don't. I know this union, corruption. Family and friends work for two of the three American manufacturers. It's beyond uh, comprehension. Many of the line workers have criminal records. Their behavior continues at work, fight on the assembly line, beating up managers. I have seen fights in parking lots, drug use and deals during breaks, uh, rampant theft of company employee property, senior employees still sitting on the bench watching television or phone calls all day. Nobody gets fired. Sad because the remainder of good employees are left to pick up the pieces, literally. Um, 
and, and nothing surprises me anymore. I, 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 I could totally see this environment, and, and I know there's been problems with this kind of stuff for a long time. Now, whether or not everyone in the union is bad, you know, we know that's that, you know, percentage wise, it's anyone's guess. Um, but, but I totally get it. And I, and I like to hear from other people in the community. What are your opinions about the UAW? And it doesn't mean that I don't want workers to, you know, get paid more, et cetera. Um, I do think, though, they're in a very different position than in the past. Uh, they want like a four day work week, 32 hours. They want an increase of like 40% in their salary, you know, better quality of life, et cetera. Um, the problem is, is that we can make cars uh, anywhere in, in the world these days. And for some uh, manufacturers, it might be cheaper to make them in Mexico and then, you know, bring them into the U.S. Um, from there or, or otherwise. So it's just you don't have the same position of strength. So we'll see what happens. Um, other people mentioned in comments before that maybe the government will come in and bail out the automakers so they can pay higher salaries. That is always a possibility. Uh, I will make this 100% clear. I am not a fan of GM. I am not a fan of Ford, and sadly, I, I just don't care for most American manufacturers. Even though we talk about how Tesla's stock is overvalued, I'm, I'm fine with Tesla. Is you know, if you want that kind of car. Um, however, I, I do think many manufacturers out there are very good. You know, you can get a Honda, a Toyota, a Kia, a Hyundai. If you want to get a, a BMW, Mercedes, you want to go with more luxury, etc. Um, Volkswagen, if you want one of those. I'm just saying, there's a lot of choices out there, and, and just I'm not into GM or or Ford, but um, you know, I, I also know that they're part of the stalwart companies that um the, the government always backs i'll start with the right word but the kind of the ones that the government will never not back same with the airlines the government will always bail out the airlines are what they do um so we'll keep an eye on this one and um you know it's funny because uh, a lot of the news today is, is all kind of the same malu uh like if you look at the headline this one this is an interesting one for those of you who are old enough to remember um final fantasy makers 30 percent plunge may just be uh, be just the beginning. Maybe may be just, if they spelled that wrong, plunge may be just the beginning. Uh, but basically, this is Square Enix. And, uh, Enix, and uh, they made Final Fantasy. And if you remember, uh, if you're old enough, Final Fantasy X was a really popular one. And I, and, and I fell in love with all of the characters. Um, I mean, they, I think they're really attractive. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about uh, if you watch that, if you know that game. Um, but evidently, I, I, I guess, um, you know, people who are into this stuff, uh, have really been disappointed with the product added as of late and, and they're just not putting out good products, right? And here was a quote I thought was really interesting. It said, oh, flooding the market with unfinished, bad, or untested games is a bad move. And uh, this was someone naming Marvel's Avengers, I guess, wasn't a very good game. Forsaken, not that good. A deal field, not that good, I guess. The company has overstressed itself on too many titles with, without proper oversight. And then evidently there were insiders in the company uh, we're saying that, you can read it right here, it says, current and former Square Enix employees asked not to be named, so I want to do this, you know, um, anonymously, uh, not authorized to speak publicly, pin the blame for that on the company's approach to making every single project a single producer's fiefdom. Uh, producers are given full reign over the scope and direction of projects, and there's a shortage of proper documentation and team structure. The people said the contractors who've done work for Square Enix described an ad hoc process where project goals can shift without warning. And I, I just think when you kind of see all this stuff, it just feels like it was poorly managed. Um, this was a similar situation with Blizzard where they had some really hot, uh, you know, essentially properties, be it your StarCraft, be it your, your Warcraft, I'm sure you guys know these Di Diablo. Um, but if you manage your company poorly, right, um, they can go downhill very, very quickly because it's a highly competitive environment. Players... Um, you know, buy games year to year. They don't necessarily have to buy your game if there's other choices out there. So we'll see what happens with this one. So this is kind of a fun story to talk about. Um, and uh, moreover, you know, this is a, a Japanese company. Um, we we are co all connected. You know, I could read a headline here, Asia markets fall as investors watch Japan and South Korea data uh, and the U.S. inflation numbers ahead, right? So we're all connected. And this is um, in Osaka. Uh, if you've never been there, it's Japan. Um, and uh, moreover, talking about going on in around the world, this is a really interesting story as well. So you can read headlines. Bakers, 40% uh, pay cuts cut, uh, show the China dream fading in its richest cities. So basically, basically, if you're in finance in China, right, in the past, everything was booming and you were just making tons of deals, you were making tons of money, but 40% pay cut among bankers. And this is the chart, which I thought was really interesting. Um, you can see here, Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, Hangzhou, Guangzhou, right? Um, 2017, the black boxes represent, um, I guess, uh, was it pay increases? I think this is what this data is. And then the blue is essentially pay decreases, right? So people aren't getting paid as much. Like like wages are going down, which is really interesting. 
Um, also, too, consumers are worried, so they're not spending. Here's a quote. It says, everybody thinks Chinese consumers are not consuming because they feel there's too much uncertainty and they don't feel like it. Uh, some people in China cannot consume. Um, it, it could be one or the other, right? Either they, they don't feel like consuming, meaning that they feel you know insecure about the future, or they just frankly can't. They just don't have any money at all. Um, because there's a difference between not being able to you know do it because you don't have any money or keep your money on the sidelines because you don't you want to save it for a rainy day. And so this is when you know I, I like to talk about this kind of stuff where um, you know all the Tesla bulls there with Tesla on the channel a lot where they say, oh, you know, we're gonna make money no matter what. But it's like, and this happened Apple as well. If you're a big company and you sell a ton of products in China and Chinese workers, you know, salaries are going down. Moreover, they're afraid to spend money because they're worried about the future. Uh, and you're not putting out products that's like inspire people to buy it. Like you're probably gonna have to cut prices that's gonna eat into the bottom line and, and come up with ways to incentivize people to come. But um, if they don't wanna spend, they don't wanna spend. Now, one thing though that they are spending money on, and this is anywhere around the world knows sort of why when people say, hey, Chris, what, what kind of you know stocks and investments do you like? I always say defense. The defense sector is one of the ones that, that, that the governments will always spend on. Um, it's not like they're, never, they're not going to, especially in today's world. And um, China in particular is kind of interesting. Uh, I guess they got some new aircraft carriers here. Um, they're uh, comparing the size of this thing. So I guess is the uh, Fujian type. So I could run it to the uh, Ford, USS Ford. And, and they're roughly the same. I mean, I just put in these drawings here, but it's, it's kind of, you know, roughly the same idea. And um, it, it, it was, you know, aircraft carrier. And it was really interesting because um, we, we actually have the, uh, <laughs> the routes of where they, where they go. And then basically they just uh, kind of hang out around Japan and then just kind of circle back and always cross over um, around Taiwan to sort of threaten, um, you know, military presence. So, you know, when you see this kind of stuff, I just think, yep, military contractors are always going to make money. Now, I'll tell you what else is going on, which is really interesting. Um, this finally went through. So for those of you who have been to Venice, Italy, um, you'll know that it can get very, very crowded there. And um, my wife and I, we've, we've been there. We, we like it quite a bit. It's fun. It's a, it's a fun city. Um, one thing we don't like, though, is the cruise ship. So we actually spent the night. If you don't spend the night and you're just a day tripper, you got to pay five buck tax. Uh, actually, it's five euros. So it's like five twenty three, I think, in, in dollars, but you know, five dollars, basically. Um, and, and this is an interesting move because I wonder if um, more sort of popular tourist generations will do this as a sign of inflation, right? You know, restaurants charge more, et cetera, and locations may charge more. Now, one of the things that's going on as well, which I think is an important one, is with the rise uh, in costs of many things, not just one or two things, but many things, um, this is a sad headline to read. You can see uh, more why more baby boomers are sliding into homelessness. So uh, I actually didn't know this. So I knew... There was a homeless problem in the USA. I totally knew that, but not necessarily that it was affecting, you know, a lot of older people. And the basic gist of it is that um, if you're only relying on Social Security and you didn't really invest um, at all because you couldn't afford it or you didn't invest because you just didn't plan for it, either one, right? Either one, the results are the same. Um, you're really struggling. And, you know, in fact, uh, we've seen a spike in percent of homeless people over 60. Um, they had a bunch of the charts of various cities, but basically they had all read the same numbers that the percentage of the homeless population that is older, um, be it like in the 50s, 60s, et cetera, uh, keeps getting larger. Um, and, and if you look at this chart here, this makes it really, really easy to understand. So basically, Social Security uh, goes up, you can see that, but rents go up a lot faster. And you know, the last couple of years, rents have just you know spiked through the roof for many, many people. And if you're on a fixed income, you know, be it Social Security, and again, if you didn't plan well for retirement for whatever reason, um, you're really struggling. And so I hope you guys understand it's kind of the message on this channel all the time. And I invest, save for a rainy day, these kind of things. I'll, 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 I try my best to keep you informed. And um, when I show you all these things about jobs and companies and stuff like that, it, especially for younger viewers who just don't know, good times aren't always. Like it's it's not always the market, you know, quadruples every year. <laughs> it's, that doesn't happen all the time. It's not always that that, that companies hire to infinity and pay you unlimited money. Not, not necessarily. Uh, when the money's not there, when, when you know, like the video game company where, where the producers can't just go off and just do crazy things and, and not worry about making money for the company, um, because but that, you know, there, there, there was a previous time when maybe the money was flowing and it just seemed like you were free to do anything. But, you know, ultimately then companies start to start to, you know, tighten their belts and say, okay, we, we got to be more physically uh, responsible, et cetera, and be careful out there because it's not, it's easy to make money because people don't have the money anymore and, and costs are spiking across uh, for everyone. So, um, please share your thoughts on any one of these stories. I hope this is helpful, and uh, this has been your Daily News Fix.